Hello everybody. The first few flights have all been close to my home airport in Teugen. This time we're going to check the endurance of my RV7. Today we're going to fly 140 nautical miles to Kassel in Germany, which is about a one hour flight. This is kind of a dress rehearsal for the next long flight to Friedrichshafen in Germany, which is 400 nautical miles, so it's about three hours flight. RV7, 2 PUB, captain's name is Heimans, VFR from Teugen to Kassel, uh, Germany. Request aerodrome information. November X-ray, doctor, the new runway 08, right hand circuit. 08, right hand, Papa November X-ray. Yeah. Roger. Oké, okay, daar gaan wij. So why am I going to Friedrichshafen? Well, the European Aero Expo is held there, the last week of April, and I'm really honored to be invited by UL Power to feature my plane in their booth on the Expo. If you've seen my previous videos on engine selection, you know that I decided to install the UL Power engine into my RV7. Apparently the team of UL Power really liked my setup and they visited me during the build and invited me to let Papa Hotel Mike November X-Ray be their anchor in their booth on the Aero Expo. During flight training you learn about flying internationally, but actually it's just scratching the surface. Flying from the north to the south of Germany past airports such as Düsseldorf, Frankfurt and Stuttgart is not something you should do as a noob. Just like my first flight, I decided to ask an expert to join me to Friedrichshafen. This time it's Joop Sintiago. He's a retired KLM captain, the chairman of the NVAV, the Dutch chapter of the EAA, and a fellow RV7 builder. Also, he's just a great guy and someone I can learn a lot from. More on the cross country through Germany in the next video when we will fly to the Aero Expo. First, we need to test the endurance of my RV7 and see if it flies on higher altitudes and for one hour on 70% power. Together with Joop, I created the flight plan and was able to file it in the European flight plan system, which was my first victory. Next up is flying and more important execute the radio calls. Obviously it was not perfect, but I'm getting there. It's great to have uh, experts close to you that can teach you. As soon as weather permitted, we climb to 5,500 feet and set cruise power. 
The RV Cruise is at about 140 knots, which is about 160 miles per hour or 260 kilometers per hour. Also, the German airspace allowed a straight line from Teuke to Kassel. So even with a Formula One car, it will be a time that is really hard to beat. With current fuel prices, however, at 33 liters per hour, it is still painful. See you that here for? See this way? Yeah. Yeah, there links from. Yeah, yeah. The threshold. Yeah, yeah. Oh no, that's it. Come on. Oh, my. The approach to Kassel is really nice. There are hills with windmills, and since Kassel is a controlled field, you have fixed entry and exit points to the CTR. Also, the runway is really huge which screwed up my perspective and the landing was not great. The Kassel airport was completely deserted. We were literally the only plane on the apron. So after paying our landing fees, we decided to fly right back. Since it was a durability check, it was not about the destination anyway, it was about the journey. The trip home went also uneventful, which is a good thing considering the goal. I did figure out that having a tablet with your route on it is not ideal if you also need that tablet for information such as frequencies. Until I'm better in switching around, I figured it's a good idea to have some details just printed the old fashioned way. What I missed before takeoff was the flaps. I had them extended fully and forgot to retract them. With the UL power, you don't really notice it during the takeoff roll. But once you're in the air, it just doesn't accelerate enough. I figured it out quite quickly and slowly retracted the flaps. 
It's good to know you're playing and memorize everything, but it's better to actually check it with a list. To the west we fly at 4,500 feet, even thousands to the west and odd thousands to the east. And all restricted airspaces were still not active, so in a straight line back to the Netherlands. I had issues connecting my two RDEX to my EMS and couldn't solve this the proper way. So I decided to cut the canvas into two parts and hook up one RDEC to my EFIS and the other RDEC to my EMS. This worked and I now have exhaust gas temperatures and cylinder head temperatures on my panel. I also installed a plug in my manifold and connect it to the RDEC. So now I also have the manifold pressure to better determine my power settings. For me it was a challenge to slow down the RV coming from cruise and descending. Job learned me to use the power and convert the altitude into speed while descending. This results in speeds over 150 knots and while approaching Teugen circuit you need to slow down to about 85 knots or the curves in the circuit will become really steep. Papa, 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 Also, there was other traffic in the circuit, and if you come in too fast, you won't be able to keep enough spacing. The plane right in front of us is one of those electric pipistrels. They are really nice and quiet, but I can ride my bike faster. Teugen is one of the first airports in the Netherlands that has a flight school that is all electric. Probably a blessing with current gas prices, but you won't make it to Kassel. I really tried with full flaps and searching the outer edges of the circuit, but there's no way I could keep spacing with the Pipistrel. So I decided to do a go-round and join downwind uh, ahead of the Pipistrel. Uh, this is much safer and gives uh, me enough time to vacate the runway before the electric plane comes in. Ik 
Stap Hotel, Zulu and Fox Hot turning final run is your eight. Full stop. This time it was a much better landing, although I had to add a short burst of power to decrease the sink rate. Kilo of Charlie, two minutes out of Sierra direction, Apeldoorn, Sierra Head, right there. So I think it was a good dress rehearsal for the flight to Friedrichshafen. We now know more about the power and performance settings, and it looks like Papa Hotel Mike November X-Ray is capable of flying long stretches. Also, flying with Joop is a blast, and I don't see any issues flying with him for three hours to the Aero Expo. Okay, continuing flying my pie in the sky.